If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know the Earth is dotted with bizarre regional climates, all of which have a profound impact on the local wildlife and human culture. Today, that brings us to the west coast of Japan. At first glance, the climate data for Toyama looks like that of many East Asian cities. It falls into the humid subtropical climate category under the Copen Climate Classification System, which covers a broad area of East Asia and Eastern North America. In fact, it's very similar to Charlotte, North Carolina, a city near me. Toyama, however, has over 28 times the annual snowfall that Charlotte has, on average. Up and down this coastline, cities receive extraordinary snowfall. No other region with a humid subtropical climate sees snowfall totals this high. And when we consider the adjacent mountain ranges, this is one of the snowiest regions at this latitude. This is even more surprising when you consider that East Asia, as a whole, has extraordinarily dry winters. This unusual combination of heavy snowfall and relatively hot summers has had wide-reaching consequences for the wildlife and people who live here. But first, why does such a bizarre climate exist? Summers on this coastline resemble those found in most of East Asia. As the interior of the vast Asian continent heats up in summer and draws in the ocean's humid air, East and South Asia become dotted with monsoon thunderstorms. In winter, as the interior of the continent cools off, the trend reverses. Cold, dense air in the interior flows toward the warmth of the sea. Winters become frigid and dry across most of East Asia. South Asia doesn't experience the same cold, thanks to the shielding effect of mountains and the Foen effect, but it's just as dry. Where the cold, dry winter air crosses water, however, it rapidly picks up water vapor and becomes saturated. These winter winds bring thick fog to the north coast of Hainan and overcast skies to the north coast of Taiwan. As these northerly winds swing into the tropics, they're deflected westward by the Coriolis force, becoming wet trade winds. They bring heavy rain to Vietnam and India's east coast in autumn, progressively moving south as the cold outflow becomes stronger through the winter. Farther north, frigid air from Siberia crosses the Sea of Japan, picking up tremendous warmth and moisture. When the cold, saturated air mass reaches the other side, heavy snow is the result. This is physically the same thing that happens to the Great Lakes region in winter. And just as the Appalachians enhance snowfall by lifting the air mass, so do the high peaks of Japan. As the mountains draw out this moisture in the form of snow, the air descends drier on the other side, leading to far less snowfall on the east coast. So what are the consequences of all this snow? Well, if heavy snow is followed by a relatively hot summer, that means meltwater, lots of it. The Shinano River once produced devastating floods every spring before a large canal was constructed in the 20th century to control the flow. But rivers of snowmelt aren't all bad. Despite the hot summers, these rivers support many species of cold water fish that otherwise aren't found so far south in Asia. Examples include fish in the salmon family like the Pacific salmon, the Japanese char, and the yamame. Thanks to these meltwater rivers, this side of Japan is famous for trout sushi. Another fish that loves snowmelt isn't for eating. The ornamental koi has its origins here. Unlike goldfish, Koi are descended from a carp species that absolutely demands cold, oxygen-rich water, of which there's no shortage in snow country. Aside from its meltwater, the snow itself has had wide-reaching impacts on the culture and history of the region. Heavy snowpack in the mountain passes was the norm for a large part of the year. In ancient Takayama, horses pulled sleds more often than wheeled carts. Thanks to such difficult mountain travel, this side of the island historically had a weaker connection to the emperor. The Five Routes, an ancient network of major highways during the Edo period, avoided the snowier side of the mountains. 
the Yasugi clan inhabited the snowier land, and they were considered an outsider clan thanks in part to this relative isolation. Today, the abundant hydroelectric power from snowmelt has helped to industrialize this quieter side of the island, but it remains less densely populated. As a result, large mammals like the Asiatic black bear still find refuge here. For people and wildlife alike, this unique climate has brought a mix of blessings and difficulties. Thanks for watching. If you find these topics interesting, consider subscribing. There will be many more to come.